this time at the Geekery Annex, I bought a Fairchild video entertainment system and a bunch of cartridges. Does it work? Let's find out. The Fairchild Video Entertainment System, or eventually called the Fairchild Channel F, is the OG of cartridge-based home video game systems. It came out in North America just in time for the 1976 Christmas season, a full year before the Atari Video Computer System, which of course was later known as the 2600. The project was led by Jerry Lawson, a longtime Fairchild engineer, who had also previously developed one of the first microprocessor-based coin-operated video games. It really seems that Fairchild just didn't get the timing right. If this had came out a year earlier and Atari had kept their same schedule, the Channel F might have had a better chance at major success. A prototype for the system existed in 1974, but Fairchild didn't become involved until early 1976. This might have also given them the chance to develop more cartridges, which became a major feature that led Atari to its success. Even with a one-year head start, the Channel F had already fallen behind Atari in the number of available cartridges in the latter second year of existence. Another problem for the Channel F is that its technology was not quite good enough. The system only had a palette of eight colors, lower resolution, less onboard memory, and smaller ROMs in the cartridges than the Atari VCS. It did, however, have a two kilobyte frame buffer, which in principle should have made it easier to program for, although presumably not enough to overcome the other limitations. Finally, the acquisition of Atari by Warner Communications in late 1976 gave Atari the financial backing needed for its success. After acquisition by Zircon International in 1979, the Channel F kept on dry heaving through the marketplace until being discontinued in 1983. I personally have no memory of the Channel F or any home game video system from the late 1970s other than the Atari VCS and the lingering Pong type of consoles. Okay, so here's my uh, Fairchild video entertainment system that I recently purchased off of eBay. I did open up the box just to make sure uh, everything was in there. Um, interestingly, somebody uh, back in 2005 uh, sent this through priority mail just putting tape on the box and wrapping it around. So the box is in a little bit rough shape, but that's not, that's not such a big deal. It is an authentic <laughs> box. Um, <clears throat> and we can see here on the side, it, you know, it says there's a, you know, plays home TV games uh, with plug-in cartridges. Uh, there's a couple of games built in, of course. Runs on ordinary house current, remote hand controls. I mean, all this stuff was pretty new then. <laughs> so, you know, they kind of had to explain everything that was going on. So, <clears throat> in the box, there's this little uh, um, kind of brief instruction manual uh, just to tell you how to get things going. Um, <clears throat> here, is the power brick, which it's making a noise in there, so I hope that the uh, power brick is actually uh, uh, functional. And one of these uh, TV adapters. Now we're not going to use this. And then here's the here is the uh, the output, the video output. So hopefully this, um, and, and the other thing about this, it's possible um, there's a Ben Heck video where he modifies one of these um, to uh, work off an alternate power supply. Um, and the thing about this is, is that it's kind of, is that it uh, needs a couple different voltages off of here. It's a little more complicated, I think, than some, of <laughs> some uh, transformers. One of the reasons I bought this particular model, or this particular one off of eBay, was because it's quite clean. And the hope was that maybe that meant that it hadn't been used a ton, and maybe that it was in good shape. Now, of course, it could mean that it failed really early, and it just sat in somebody's, you know, sat in somebody's uh, attic for a long time. Um, so, but uh, we'll see. Now, the uh, controllers here are, are wired in. Um, when they came out with a later, uh, later version of this, the uh, that actually said uh, Fairchild Channel F uh, um, two or System two on it, it uh, these I think these controllers uh, these controllers actually could be swapped out. The bottom here, um, we see made in the USA. 
Uh, serial number 262049. There's a 726 here, and I have no idea what that might have uh, might be uh, implying. Now, <clears throat> later on, uh, I may, at some point I may open this up and, and look at the um, date codes on the, uh, the chips in here to see if, um, uh, see if I can get a better idea when this particular one was, was actually built. First thing I'm going to do is get, <laughs> is try to keep things uh, from getting too tangled up here, which I, I think I did a bad job of that already. So the power, let me, let's do that. I'm worried about that sound that it's making in there. This was, I, I bought this because of the, it was very clean. It was not the, um, the, the Mark II version of it. And um, uh, it was not, it was listed as not being, not having been tested, which is pretty common with these. So hopefully that was just, that's really true that they hadn't tested it. Maybe it, not everybody you know, if this is somebody who just like buys stuff from estate sales and stuff, they may not know much about these vintage, uh, vintage units. <clears throat> so I'm going to first of all plug this in. <clears throat> okay, I did. Okay, that is the on-off switch. I did hear something um, click in there. Now that doesn't necessarily mean anything. <clears throat> now, um, instead of one of these uh, converter boxes. Uh, I'm going to um, use one of these uh, adapters that go from this plug to the uh, um, to an F-type plug that goes directly into the um, cable television socket on a TV. Now, um, one other thing is, I'm pretty sure this TV I've got here is going to work. Um, it is a uh, it's a, it's an HD capable TV, but it's it's old enough that it also has, it does, in, in addition to the ATSC for HD digital television, it also has an NTSC decoder in it. So, um, you know, there's component in, but what we need here is the cable in. And we can plug this, plug this in. What I need to do is I need to turn on the TV. <coughs> um, let's see. Uh, I think the, oh, there it goes. I thought maybe the batteries were dead in this remote. I haven't used this TV in a while. Okay, so definitely, uh, I definitely don't want the HDMI input. Um, let's see. Hmm. I don't even remember how this TV works. Um, I haven't actually, uh, Geez, I haven't watched, <laughs> I haven't even watched a TV in forever. Okay, so that's channel. Oh, there it is. How about that? Let me turn down the volume. Okay, well, there we go. So it works. Um, it's obviously uh, not, it's not doing particularly well, um, but, this, but it does work. It comes on, um, so it's, it's waiting for, and it, I'll have to, you know, at some point I'll have to dig into this and, you know, see what I can do. Oh, there we go. So I think one thing that, that can happen here, yeah, is the, these, the cables are old. You can get kind of interference and stuff. You're seeing the banding uh, on here. That's, that's the refresh rate of the TV. Um, and as I'm moving these cables around uh, here on the machine, it's affecting the, the signal. So... Uh, one thing, you know, could be, could be a shielding issue, but that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's fairly reasonable. The sound, not as, um, uh, not sure what the, actually not sure what the sound is supposed to be, um, when you first start it up before you do anything. Um, so let's, uh, let's see, let me, okay, let me, okay, there's reset, okay. Um, let me try, let me try tennis. And there's tennis coming up. How about that? Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so let me, let me go, let me go back to, there's the hockey game. Let me, let me go back to, uh, let me go back to tennis because that's going to be a little simpler to look at. Okay, um, and there we go. It's playing. Hey, and there's, okay, that's the left joystick. Let me, uh. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, so oh, I'm not I'm not doing very well here. I need another player here for this, but it's actually working. It's I'm very happy about that. I really wasn't sure whether it was going to be um, the. I got to figure out something about the what the what's all that the static noise there, the white noise there. I mean, you can still hear the sound is still. No, oh yeah, oh I know what this is. I'm being stupid. The that's right. The sound only comes from the unit. Duh. There we go. You're not supposed to get. You're not supposed to get uh, sound from the from the unit itself or from the uh, television. Okay, there we go. So, okay, so here's hockey. Um, sure. Oh, there's okay. So the tilt only works on certain games. Okay, and the back and forth only doesn't work on tennis. So, there you can do all kinds of. One of the interesting things about this is that the these controllers are actually more capable than the uh, Atari 2600. You know, Atari VCS controllers that came after it. You can, you can, you know, you can move left and right on this in in this, the pong type of game. You can rotate and uh, to give uh, give your shot an angle. So there's bowling, video card number 21. Um, this, I believe, was this, this was one of the, I think this may have been the last one that Fairchild themselves produced. Um, uh, when Zircon bought them out, they actually produced an additional handful of games, but I think theirs started at 22. This lot was kind of a mixed lot of, you know, ones that had boxes, ones that didn't have boxes. Um, okay, so it looks like I select button one for one player, regular game, um, and then the other gives me the speed here. Let me uh, insert the cartridge here. Okay. Okay, the mechanism, mechanism seems to work okay. That's good. And let me turn this on. And there's my signal, and there we go. Again, I apologize for the, uh, uh, I'm seeing the uh, uh, I'm seeing this this the scanning here because of the refresh rate. Oh, I needed the right hand controller for some reason. Okay. Hey, there we go. <laughs> hey, I got the spare finally. <laughs> ah, you can curve. Okay, you can curve any time. Okay, let's see if I can. But once it, once it starts curving, it it goes. Okay, and you probably have to have probably have to curve it to get anywhere to get a strike. Yeah, see if you don't curve it, it looks like it. Uh... <laughs> well, that's the end of the game. <laughs> Big seventy nine points. That's <laughs> that's probably about what I would do doing real bowling too. <laughs> Let me try the faster. Let me try speed four. I don't know what speed I was on here. Maybe I was already on speed four. Okay, well that's <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. Ooh, you definitely have to use the curve when you do that. It's very hard to get it to get it timed. Oh, <laughs> left the solid eight pin. Oh, that's a nice one. You know, the old uh, 4, 6, 7, 10. Not much chance of doing much with that. Oh! Left the 8 pin again. Alright, 10th frame. Oh, that was great. <laughs> I love the sounds. Well, 129. <laughs> that's not. I guess that's not too terrible. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. I'm so glad that this actually works. The way these cartridges work is this thing. Um, this thing flips when you put it in. It flips down and, and it reveals the uh, uh, cartridge. Just a little bit. Uh, it re reveals the uh, PCB. Okay. Um, let's see. I guess uh, game one might be the only game here. Oh, let's see. Is this? Oh, this is. Oh, this is a two-player game. Oh, okay. So there's. Yeah, there's something maybe a little glitchy here. Um, 
one of the cartridges properly seated. Something's something's it's not quite this is not quite uh, not quite fully working properly. Okay, so I think the idea seems to be you only have a certain number of a certain number of shots. Yeah, okay. Okay, you have okay, it's health. So there's it's basically basically health there on those numbers. And so you lose a couple points of health when you fire and and but when you hit when you get hit you lose like 5. Oh. That's weird. Okay, so okay, well, so that's a little disappointing. So the system is not Yeah, so there's there's breakout. <laughs> Let me uh Game one, I think. Okay, HS, yeah, green, okay. Okay, I don't know what all that was doing. Let me see. Okay, oops, oh. Hmm. My controller is not working. Oops, oh boy, yeah, there's some. Yeah, there, yeah, there's, there may be some, there may be some issues uh, with the system here. One and then M is a speed. And the way this game works is you move your hmm. now that was the right the left controller, the right controller. <laughs> okay. I'm trying I'm moving the, the left hand controller, but nothing is happening. So and then when and then if I move the right controller, it you get that click there and it's like it gets confused. So it's like it's like that it's like that's triggering one of the it's like that's triggering one or more of the buttons somehow. So inside the uh, the cart one box that I have here, um, first of all, there's of course the cartridge. There's the instructions uh, instruction booklet. For the four different uh, games, Tic-Tac-Toe, Shooting gal Gallery, Doodle, and Quadradoodle. The last two are drawing uh, things. Um, now this was in the um, in Video Cart 1. Now this couldn't, I don't think this would have <laughs> came with Video Cart 1. But there's a little mini catalog here which goes up to Video Cart number 17. And it has, it's labeled here as the uh, Channel F System 2. Which was the later, later model? I think with, it had modular um, controllers and some other slight improvements. And so here um, they show give us screenshots from um, most, or maybe not all, of the different games that are on the different cartridges. So that's kind of cool. There's also a uh, video cart cartridge limited warranty. It's a warranty card that you could you could send in. So I poked around a little more and I actually tested um, all of the games I have, which um, I think I have 15. And so I, uh, I the real problem here is the right controller. Um, there seems to be one cartridge that just doesn't work, Video Cart 2. And Video Cart 1, um, the uh, last two games, the uh, Doodle and Quadradoodle, don't seem to work. Uh, but otherwise, everything works. Um, and the right controller, uh, as I noted, uh, it has a problem with when you move right. So, and so the uh, <laughs> the interference the uh, the interference <laughs> is is a lot worse at, at the moment. Again, it's just a positioning of everything. I can move left, and I can like I can uh, push to launch a ball. But as soon as on any game when I move right, it puts something uh, weird on the screen and usually resets. So there's something wrong either in the controller uh, in here, um, or there's some kind of a, a, a problem inside with a uh, um, maybe a, a bad connection or something. 
Um, and so I need to kind of I need to kind of figure out how I want to uh, go about that. Uh, otherwise, things work okay. The problem is is that some games, um, a lot of the one player games only work with the right hand controller for whatever reason. So I'm still pretty happy um, with this purchase. Um, having only one issue, uh, I'd say, is pretty good. And and if it really is that Video Cart Two is just broken or damaged, that's very easy to replace. Those are, uh, um, and Video Cart 1, those are very cheap, not rare at all. Um, so that's not really an issue. Um, the other thing is, um, <clears throat> I will have to get inside the machine. <clears throat> uh, I may try to take the controller apart and take a look at it um, and see if that's an issue. Although I don't know why there would be something in the controller that would cause the uh, game to reset. Um, as opposed to some problem with a connection inside the machine. I'm not sure how uh, the controller could give some kind of reset. Uh, but uh, for now, um, it's mostly working. And uh, hopefully later on um, I'll have some more videos, maybe, maybe showing playing some games uh, and maybe showing the eventual repair. So thanks for watching.